So you just bought an Elgato Stream Deck. Maybe you have the new Stream Deck Neo with the eight buttons, or maybe you got the big 32 button XL Stream Deck, and you don't have any idea what buttons to put on it. Why did you buy something if you don't even know what you're gonna use it for? Here are five beginner friendly ideas that you can implement right now. Now, if you want a more advanced video, I'm gonna be releasing another video later this week with five advanced ideas. So subscribe if you wanna see that video. By the way, if you don't have a Stream Deck or you're thinking about buying one, I do have 5% discount codes for literally every single one. Even the one with the, the Nobby Boys. They're permanent discount codes, by the way, so no rush. You don't have to use them right now. You can use them whenever you want. Or if you have an iPhone or iPad, you could just use the Stream Deck app for free. They give you six free buttons that you never have to pay for. You don't have to enter in any payment details. And everything I'm gonna show you today works exactly the same in the app. The first tip is to use pinned buttons. Now, Elgato added a feature somewhat recently that allows you to pin your most used buttons so that they're always available on your Stream Deck. So even when you navigate through folders or swipe through pages, those buttons will always be there. You just right click on any of your buttons and pin it and it's gonna turn gray so you know that's been pinned. I like using this for things like my view count stats, my most used OBS scenes, or like my mic mute button. And as you can see, when I navigate through folders, those buttons are always on the Stream Deck. You can still override your pinned button. So if there are certain pages where you want to use a different function where that pinned button is, you can still use it. But if you delete that button, it's gonna revert back to whatever you had pinned in that slot. Number two is to use hotkeys. This sounds pretty obvious, but if there's anything that you want your Stream Deck to do that it doesn't have native actions for, you can just drag over a hotkey button and then that button will simulate any key combination that you enter. You can give it a label or even make your own custom icons so you don't have to remember what that key combination does. You just look down and then you just read it and it just tells you. I know some of you are like, wow, Nutty, that's great. I, I, I figured I could have figured that out on my own, but I have Microsoft Power Toys on my computers and Power Toys has a lot of hotkeys for doing really useful things. For example, if you press Windows Shift C, it pulls up this really useful color picker. Or if you press Windows Shift uh, tilde, the little dash thing, uh, it pulls up fancy zones which is like a super advanced Windows snapping feature. This is amazing, I love this. But did you know that Windows also has a built-in emoji keyboard? So if you press Windows period, you can search for whatever emoji you want. You can also navigate through virtual desktops by pressing control plus Windows left and right. Or if you use like a video editor, there's like a million different hotkeys to remember if you use like DaVinci Resolve. Like how the hell am I supposed to remember all these keys? I don't. I have a folder full of hotkeys and I don't even know what these key combinations are, but they have labels on them. So I know exactly what these buttons do. If you have a Stream Deck Plus, you can even use the knobs to do anything you want. This works really well for video editing. You can set up the dials so that when you turn left on a dial, it presses left, right, it presses right. And then when you click into the dial, it presses control backslash. So that way you can scrub through your timeline in DaVinci Resolve just by turning the dials or you can make quick cuts by clicking into it. Number three is quick folders. I'm gonna take full credit for this feature because I had a meeting with Elgato like two years ago and I suggested this idea to one of the technical managers. Elgato, back me up. This story definitely happened, okay? I'm 100% that it happened. I call it quick folders, but I believe the actual feature is called folder auto exit. Basically, if you're in a folder, there's a little radio button that says auto exit. And if you turn this on, it automatically backs you out of that folder as soon as you tap on one of the buttons within that folder. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but I find this really useful because I have a lot of OBS scenes and rather than making 20 different buttons on the top layer of my stream deck, I can shove all of my OBS scene buttons into a single folder. So that way, if I wanna switch scenes, it only requires two button presses to change scenes 
as opposed to three. It sounds like a really minor thing, I get it, but you guys know how it is when you're a streamer. You have to be the on-screen talent, the producer, the lighting guy, the audio guy, all at the same time. And these little shortcuts and little ways to save brain energy just make a big difference and allow you to focus more on entertaining your audience rather than worrying about how your stream is produced. Hey, so I need this video to be seven seconds longer so I can put mineral ads in it. Um, so I wanted to wish you a very happy birthday. There's like a one in 365 chance that I nailed it. Okay, back to the video. Number four is global styles. Now you probably already know this, but every button on your stream deck can have their own labels with different fonts, sizes, alignments. And the thing is, if you wanna change all the fonts on all of your buttons all at once, you used to have to do that one by one. And if you have like 60 different buttons, that's super annoying. But thankfully, a little bit ago, they added a new setting that's basically like a global style setting. So you can set up the default font and text alignment for all of your buttons, and then apply that style to all of your existing buttons from one menu. Super handy, but I do wish that Elgato would expand the font options because it's pretty limited. My favorite font is the Tribuchet MS font, but it, you can copy my settings here. I, I think this looks pretty good. All right, last one is a little bit of a silly one, but I'm gonna call it secure buttons. Now, we've all accidentally hit the start streaming button on our stream deck. Super awkward when you're like recording a YouTube video and then you mess up like 20 times in a row only to realize that you were actually streaming the whole time. We've all been there, right? Some buttons like the OBS record button or the stream button have a long press option. So if you turn on this checkbox, these buttons will only ever activate if you long press the button. If you short press it, nothing happens. You'll see a little triangle saying it didn't work. But yeah, this is a really simple idea that I'm glad that Elgato implemented. But what if that's not secure enough for you? What if you still find yourself accidentally hitting the stream button? Well, for mine, I actually made a folder, put the stream button inside that folder with a gigantic message saying, do you want to stream? And then when you click yes, that's not the stream button because it's actually another folder. And then inside that folder, it says, are you sure about that? And then you press yes again, it goes into another folder and only then will you actually find the real stream button. Okay, maybe that was overkill, but Imagine there's like a Stream Deck plugin where it like made you solve like a CAPTCHA to start the stream. So you're like, you like clicking the button. It's like, oh, find the fire hydrants or something. That would be hilarious. Someone make that, that would be awesome. Anyway, just some simple ideas for those of you that are new to using the Stream Deck. If you guys want to see that more advanced Stream Deck ideas video, subscribe. I'll be releasing that soon. I want to show you some ideas that you've never seen before. And I mean like actually never seen before. Yes, we all know about that Windows Mover plugin, okay? We don't need like 20 other people to make YouTube videos about that, okay? And don't forget 5% discount code in the description. Make sure to use that. I'm trying to get that affiliate money, baby. Let's go.